So first of all, the Villa Report, one of the fans forums, have asked, will promoting Aston Villa be your biggest achievement to date? Yes, because of the size of the club. You know, nobody expected me to do it at all. Um, we were 66 to 1 outsiders. I would think we'd be one of the favourites at the start of the season. With favouritism becomes expectation and that filters down to everybody. So it's me aim. I wouldn't have come here if I didn't think I could do it. So yes, I'd love to see this club back in the big league because that's where it needs to be. What are your views on safe standing? Well, I've seen it abroad in Germany and it works very, very well. Of course, we're all wary of standards and health and safety and all the rest of it in football grounds. I don't think there's quite like a little standing area. Um, so I'm, I'm all for it, as long as obviously it's safe and it's been proved in Germany that it is safe. Obviously you've got to put barriers in place and all the rest of it, but I'm all for it because I do think it adds a little bit. And of course, if it's cheaper for the supporters to stand rather than have seats, then I'm all for that too, because we've got to be mindful of the fact that football's becoming very expensive. And there's people who maybe can't afford it who would love to come. So if that helps them too, then great. Now Mark Bannister has been in touch over Twitter and he says, if you could sign one player from Villa's past, who would it be Villa's and past. why? Well, look, I remember I was speaking to, uh, to Kev McDonald yesterday who was telling me, you know, when Martin O'Neill was here and he, he, he gave the list of players, you know, was, was just England international, Scottish international, they were just international players. If I was going to go for one, then I had the privilege to play for him when he was, or play with him when he was 18. We both played for England youth team. And I remember playing with him at the time thinking, what a player he is. And unfortunately, he got caught short with injury. And I think now if I could have Gary Shaw as my centre forward, then I'll be delighted about that. But when I think of Staunton and Petroff and and uh, Downing, and it's endless, the list of really good players who've played for this club. Um, but it may be a bit sentimental then, go for Gary Shaw. Jacob Fennell wants to know, what attracted you to our club, considering at the time of taking over, we were in a negative run of form? <sighs> Taston Villa was a no-brainer. Um, I was possibly, I'm not going to be conceded here, but I was hoping that I would maybe get a phone call from a Premier League club. But when Aston Villa called, in my eyes, then they are a Premier League club. We are a Premier League club, and hopefully we'll get there eventually. Um, but I had no hesitation. It was uh, because of the eyes and the stature and the nature of the club. And I, was, I hope that I can be the one that puts it back on its feet. Gary Costello has also tweeted in and he said, did Fergie bribe the ref at Old Trafford in 93 against Sheffield Wednesday to add on those seven minutes well, of injury you time? Yeah, I forgot all about it, that, we were, that Villa, we were up against Villa at the time for the title, of course. Um, um, but if you do, if you, if you do analyse it, the actual change, it was six, seven minutes, was the referee or the linesman got injured. So that's where the six or seven minutes came from. And you actually, when you, when you analyse the game over again, even though Villa fans won't like me for saying it, that's why the delay was the six, seven minutes, which enabled me to score them a couple of goals. Hayden Frogger asks, what has been the toughest challenge you have had to face as Villa manager so far? Well, it's not great when you lose five on the spin, because that shouldn't happen. Uh, I think the biggest challenge, uh, the biggest challenge was trying to lift everybody, because there's been change and too much change and, and no stability, then whether you're in the media department or whether you're in the ground staff or whether you're a player or a, um, a member of my staff, whether you're a first team coach, wherever you are, if you are unstable in your position, thinking, over, looking over your shoulder, thinking, am I going to lose my job, which a lot of people have in the club, and I detected that when I walked through the the, through the door, that everybody seemed to be on edge, and there was so the biggest challenge was trying to get everybody to come and work together, and try and be and give that bit of stability. 
Now, the only way I can get stability, I'm not naive enough to think I have to get a few results. But the most important thing for me is that everybody who comes and works at the club now enjoys working at the club because for too long they've had it tough looking over their shoulders. Are we going to lose our job? Is it going to be me this week? Is it going to be me this month? New manager coming in, does he want his own people in? I think that was the biggest challenge of getting everybody on the, on the same page and singing off the same hymn sheet. Now Liam McCallion has also been in touch and he asks, where do you see the club in five years time? Well in five years time hopefully I'm retired. <laughs> five years at this club would do me fantastic and we're in, we're in back in and amongst the Premier League and back into being in amongst it again. I think that's where we've got to try and achieve. It's going to be very difficult to try and break into the top six or seven of the Premier League. I think that has got to be the aim. But as we found out now, the, the, the colossal sums of money that's going around, very difficult. So in five years, if it's an established Premier League team by then, then I'll be very happy. James Rushton wants to know, what would you say is your approach to management and what is your philosophy behind your managing? <clears throat> well, I think everybody who plays for me knows that you have to work hard. I, um, I don't put up with um, people who don't give their all. So all I ask is that you put your boots on and you play to the best of your ability. And if you do that in management with me, you'll be fine. If you don't, then I don't put up with it. So that basically, and I want people to enjoy themselves. I never ask anybody anything that I wouldn't be prepared to do myself. So I'm pretty straightforward like that. I want people to enjoy coming to work, enjoy playing, especially, and playing for a club like this. You know, it should be, and it is, the best days of their lives. So. That's the only real philosophy I've got, that just to work hard and enjoy, enjoy the journey. The next question is from Baraj Singh, who wants to know, who is the greatest player you have ever managed? Um, well, I, I think it's quite easy. And I hope the Aston Villa supporters don't take this the right way, but I had a certain centre forward, Christoph Dugary at Birmingham, who had 50 caps and for six months was solely responsible for keeping us in the Premier League. He was, for six months, the best player I've ever had the fortune of managing. A French international had a bit of that little bit of flair, that little bit of uh, extravagance, a little bit. He had the lot. He was the complete player. A little bit up here mad, but that added to him. He was certainly the best player I've been able to manage. And Chloe has asked, what is your favourite thing about managing Aston Villa? <laughs> well, look, they won us the game Saturday at Wigan. If we hadn't had 5,000 behind the goal, I'm not so sure we might have gone on to win them the match. I'll never know that. But I think that is the biggest thing of, man of the, the size of the club. You realise when you walk through the door doors of what a big club it is. So... As I've said many, many times, I've waited for a long time to manage a club like this. So the support, the challenge of getting the club in the Premier League, um, but mainly the size of the club is, uh, is what I enjoy most. Tell us what it was like to play against Barcelona, against the likes of Romario and players of that hill. Well, I was fortunate. I was fortunate. And you know, the big occasions in your life, and big games anyway, one was against Barcelona in the Champions League, where I had a, probably the worst evening of my life trying to mark Romario. We got both beat 4-0, it could have been 14. We were that poor on the night. And of all the games that you managed to play, you still remember those ones and think, one of the great nights, 120,000 there, one of the great nights, and you have a nightmare. So, great when you look back on it because there were special players, Romario and Stoichkov and people like that were tremendous to play against. Um, and the new Camp was terrific, but I had an absolute shocking game. I was hopeless on the night and uh, we got well beaten. But overall, I was fortunate. I played in many big games and won in many things. And I played with some very lucky to play with some really, really good players. And who is the best player that you personally ever faced? Would you would you say faced, faced yeah, <laughs> Romario? Faced. Romario was terrific, yeah. But then, it's, then again, so was Kenny Daglish. So was 
Ian Rush, so was Thierry Henry, so was Dennis Bergkamp, all great players. How do you try and pick one out of them? But if I had to pick one, probably the biggest dune on the biggest stage and the biggest night of my life, he gave me <laughs> the runaround was, was Romario, the Brazilian centre forward. He was fantastic. What was it like to play with Roy Keane and was he really that scary and fearsome? Oh yeah, oh yeah, all of that. But underneath it all, a really, really decent man, decent lad. And uh, had the, I've had the privilege to have played with him since he was a young lad. Um, so when he, in his youth, you always going to knew that he was, he was always driven. There's something in you what makes a great player. And certainly the word great is used too often, but Roy Keane was a great, great player. He had an inner drive about him where I always say he'd step over his grandmother to win. And that's what the big player's about. They've got a bigger mentality than the average player. You know, maybe not the best ability, but they've got a mentality which makes them a great player. And Roy was all of them things. Scary, determined, fiercely competitive. Um, you'd have to kill him to beat him. That sort of type is what, how you win titles, how you win trophies when you've got people like Roy Keane. And if money was no object at all, which player in world football would you like to sign what, today? No? <laughs> yeah. No? Well, is Ronaldo too much, Messi too much, and of course, Gareth Bale, Gareth Bale single-handedly, you have to pay your hats off to him. He's gone to Real Madrid, didn't find it easy to start with, has now performed at a level where he's made himself a superstar and does all the right things. You know, he's single-handedly helped Wales put Wales up where they are. I don't mean that disrespectfully, but he really, really has. He's been their talisman, seems to enjoy it. So if he becomes available, Dr. Tony, then put your hand in your pocket and buy his character.